We have the brand new Core i9-11900K. In goes our 3080 Supreme. Whoa, 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 whoa. 250 frames a second at 1440p in Apex Legends. Ryzen, what on earth is that? Intel has just launched their latest 11th generation chips that they say are the best on the planet for gaming. Is that gonna be the case? Are they talking out of their... Is that suitable for this channel? Worry not, because in this video we're going to be putting together one of the most powerful gaming computers I've ever built. We've got some ridiculously high-end components here on the desk today, including the RTX 3080 that you guys voted they actually wanted to see in the next build. And as always, we're going to be putting together this full system. We're going to show you everything that's great about it, maybe a few areas where it could be improved. And of course, we're going to show you those all-important gameplay benchmark numbers. So if you do want to put something like this together, or maybe you're looking at an Intel 11900K, then you know exactly how it performs and whether it's right for you. Let's get started on this epic PC build after a short word from this video sponsor. Need a VPN? Surfshark is a fantastic VPN service that lets you browse privately and helps to keep you safe and secure online. Surfshark is jam-packed with features, dead easy to use, and available across a wide variety of platforms, with no limits on how many devices you can use on a single subscription. There's a strict no-log policy, so no matter what or where you're browsing, you can rest easy knowing that your privacy is intact. Sign up for Surfshark today with that link down below, using code PCCentric for 83% off and an extra three months for free. So yes, it is once again that time where we have brand new CPUs. And this year is a little bit of a weird one because I don't think these are gonna be the most exciting things in the world, sorry Intel. But that's okay because the thing that I find fantastic really about this launch is now both Intel and AMD are offering really compelling gaming CPUs. And while the i9 that we're using here today is actually an eight core chip rather than a 10, when it comes to gaming performance, these things should be stronger than ever. So you don't really need to worry about making the wrong decision because unless you're, I don't know, like building a productivity machine that you also game on, both AMD and Intel are brilliant options. As we're using the top-end 11900K, we are going to need a pretty decent motherboard to properly get the most out of it. The exact motherboard that we're using here today is from ASUS. This is the Maximus Hero 13. If you're looking to spend the big bucks on the gaming computer, you want something that has no compromises, and this definitely has pretty much no compromises. There is one exception to this that does stand out, and it's not an ASUS thing. This is actually a platform thing with the Z590 chipset, and that is while this top slot will support PCI generation generation 4, so the super fast SSDs and Gen 4 graphics cards, everything below that is limited to Gen 3. So it's fine for pretty much all gamers to be honest with you, but if you are someone that wants to have multiple Gen 4 drives, then you are still going to have to look at AMD. However, there is actually an advantage to this, believe it or not, which is that you don't have an annoying chipset fan down here at the bottom because it's not required. That's probably not a big deal, I know, put the pitchforks down AMD fanboys, it is just an observation. But are you ready for the really exciting bit, the star of the show? Not a GPU today, oh no. We have the brand new Core i9-11900K ready to go in our system. It is actually cross-compatible with the last generation of motherboards, so if you do have Z490, then you can actually pop this in, and certain motherboards will actually support the Gen 4 as well, which is a little bit weird. You want to know something interesting? I honestly don't know what's more expensive, the motherboard or the CPU. Take your guess. Let me know down in the comment section below and we'll all find out together whether we were right. Is that a fun game? It sounds pretty fun to me, but I'm a huge nerd, so my opinion doesn't count. Pressing on, we have our RAM. This is some Trident Z Neo, we're using 32 gig. This kit is 3200 megahertz, but if you can get hold of 3600, that is what I would recommend. Either get the Neo, or if it's cheaper, get the standard. Having said that though, the Neo is actually some of the best looking RAM that you can actually buy on the market. And unlike a lot of more luxury kits, this one isn't really any more expensive. It's pretty mainstream priced. As we're using four sticks here, it should be pretty difficult for you to get the spacings wrong, but obviously do make sure that they are pushed in all the way. It is an easy mistake to make. Four times the sticks, four times the clicks. That actually rhymed. Can, can I get a round of applause for that, please? If you think I'm weird watching these videos, imagine like being my adjoining neighbor and then just having no context and just hearing me talk to myself and laugh to myself pretty much every day. You'd think I was a, I was a bit loopy. And don't go saying that I am. I'm not, I promise. 
Aha, now this is a first. PCIe Generation 4 storage on an Intel platform. Very exciting stuff. The one that we're using here today is the Western Digital Black. This is a brand new drive from Western Digital who did decide to send this out for this video. And I do want to be completely clear about this. This is an absolutely insanely fast SSD. And if you can actually use that speed, you're going to be over the moon happy with this. However, at this current point in time, it doesn't really make any difference for gaming. You can actually see my full test with Gen 3 versus SATA versus Gen 4 and a hard drive in the top right hand corner of your screen if you do want to learn a little bit more. In the future, if I was a betting man, I'd say that there are actually going to be some game settings that can't be turned on unless you have a super fast SSD. But at the moment, that is not the case. So if you are looking to save yourself some money or maybe upgrade to a better GPU, then I personally would grab a Gen 3 drive and get one of these at a later date. But ultimately, the choice is entirely up to you. Always remember to remove the little cover that you get on the thermal pad and then grab your SSD and make sure that you are actually putting this in the top slot. Ah, that's interesting. I haven't actually seen this on a motherboard before. Asus are realizing that you probably are going to pair this with like a double sided super fast SSD. So you actually get a thermal pad below the storage and above. How nice is that? Pretty nice to be honest. Check out our completed motherboard combo. Pretty much ready to go inside of our case but as we're using a all-in-one I do want to get the mounting hardware fitted first as it just saves you a little bit of hassle. Top tip for you there. It is time to go to the depths to bring up the Kraken. The Kraken Z63 to be exact. And this thing is so customizable. You can use it to maybe view the temperatures, you can look at your clock speeds, or you can just put a silly GIF on it. It's a great way of customizing your PC. And even if you don't want to go for liquid cooling, I think a lot of people would grab this just for the display. Let's grab our sandwich bag. Unfortunately, lunch is not included. Install our Intel back plates. Grab the Intel screws, and this is exactly why you do this on the motherboard, just because it is so much easier. And you don't sort of have to have three hands just to do one job, which means it is time to actually install this into our case. And this is one that I have used before. If you've actually watched my how to build a PC video, you'll be familiar with this. This is the dark base. What is it? I've forgotten its name. That's embarrassing. It's the Purebase 500DX and is actually my favorite case that Be Quiet make because the size of it isn't too ridiculous. It's actually uh, fairly small for what is a full size ATX chassis. It's got plenty of airflow. You've got lovely mesh on the front. It's a remarkably well-rounded case that does come highly recommended. It even comes with noise dampening foam on the side panel. They think of these things. I am sorry if Mr. Be Quiet is actually watching this video because unfortunately I am removing your fans because they're not really RGB enough for this build. And while they are Pure Wings fans, which are very good, they're not the uh, top level fans that you can get on some more premium cases. So we are actually going to upgrade them. I always feel quite mean removing stock fans when they give you three of them. It's, it's, it's like you're throwing money away ever so slight setback, I didn't actually realize that this case only supports a 240 radiator up top, whereas sure enough we're using a 280 here. And this definitely isn't a crisis because you can just remove the hard drive cage and then the front does actually support up to a 360 millimeter radiator, but obviously the problem with this is that you're going to get slightly reduced airflow to the graphics card, or at least the airflow that you are going to get is going to be warm air from that CPU cooler. First things first though, we will be grabbing our motherboard and actually dropping this down into place with all of those lovely standoffs pre-applied for us. So it should just be a case of dropping this down. That was probably the easy bit and you can now start to see exactly what I mean about the size of this thing. Unless you're going to want to like cram ridiculous amounts of hardware inside this thing, I think it's going to look a really nice amount of full, I guess. Next step is fans. Here we're using not necessarily my favorites, but probably the favorite RGB fan on the market today. These are upside down, but if they weren't, they would be the QL RGB Bees from Corsair. Firstly, when it comes to thermals and acoustics, they're brilliant performers. They're very over the top, but you can customize these in so many different ways. There's loads of different effects, and they're actually very easy to set up, configure, and even plug in, because unlike the old Corsair fans, they actually use a single box now, whereas before you used to have two, which was really annoying if you wanted a nice tidy build, especially in a smaller case like this. It would have been a bit of a nightmare, but these days it's actually uh, pretty simple. 
Oh dear, I realized that I've made a little bit of a boo-boo with everything that I've been trying to fit in here. And essentially, without some very uh, clever jiggery pokery, this is not going to work. And I'll tell you the main culprit, it is this. The ridiculous Supreme 3080 graphics card that we're using here today. Don't get me wrong, this is going to have absolutely insane performance and the fact that it is so big is great for cooling. But when you try and put this inside the case, you can see it is really tight in terms of fit. So what can't I put at the front? A huge whacking radiator. So this is incredibly frustrating, but rest assured, I think I can still make it work if I put the fans on this side of the case, so actually at the front, if you like, and then using these rather than an intake as an exhaust, I've got these fans at the top actually bringing air in. I've got this usually exhaust fan bringing air in as well. And I know you're thinking that isn't this gonna make the CPU a little bit hotter because it's exhausting hot air? And obviously the answer is yes, but personally, from experience, I find this to be the best solution because it's your graphics card that usually gets the loudest rather than the CPU cooler. Let's plug in the front I.O. and we do actually have USB-C on this case, which is pretty nice. I'm not a huge fan of losing a full-size USB-A to achieve this, but if you don't regularly use the front panel, it's obviously nice to have that selection. It's quite a swanky little connector as well. It isn't reversible, which is a shame, but it is a lot easier to plug in than most things inside your PC, to be honest. I also give Be Quiet an absolutely huge shout out for making all of the cable connectors black, which is quite refreshing, especially when you're doing an all black build. The power supply that we're using here today is brand new from Be Quiet. This is the Dark Power 12. And I'm using this pretty much because 1000 watts is probably going to be optimal for a system like this. You can go a little bit higher, but you probably never use it. But if you go for like a 750, 850, then you might find you're not getting the best efficiency. Or if you are doing a lot of overclocking, then it just might not be enough. My word, I didn't actually realize this, but this is 80 plus titanium. I don't think I've ever used a titanium power supply before, but I reckon this is probably quite expensive. It is fully modular, as you'd expect at this price, so you can plug in all of the cables that you need and then leave the others in the box, rather than making a mess at the back of your PC. It is a bit of a shame that these cables don't look a little bit better. I mean, ultimately they are jet black and sleeved, but they're not individually braided like you might find on something like the RG Thor. So if you are all about the looks, then you're going to need to upgrade these, which actually can get quite expensive. Bizarrely enough, you can actually overclock this power supply as well. You get a little button, you plug it into the back, and you can toggle between overclock on and overclock off. Slide it in and screw it down. Start plugging in the cables with the big boy. He is a very chunky boy. 24 pins. If you look to the top left of the motherboard, you can see we have two different CPU 8-pin power connections, and you do only need to plug in one, but if you do have a power supply that can accommodate two, obviously it makes sense to plug them in. Our next step is going to actually be to install the RGB fan hub, which is pretty straightforward. It is a little bit easier than it was on the previous generation, as we've already mentioned. You do have just this one block. It has SATA power and then a USB connection that goes straight to your motherboard, and then the fans themselves do, of course, have the usual fan connector, but then you also have this little bright orange cable that says to RGB hub, so the fan speed and the lighting are controlled independently. You get this little 3M tape pad that you put on the back, peel it off, and then you can stick this anywhere you want on the back of your PC, but do bear in mind that all of the cables do actually need to be able to reach this, so if you get it in the wrong place, then it's gonna get a bit messy. Now, this is usually the most exciting bit, but I think for me today, this is gonna be the most uh, tricky bit, which is getting the graphics card inside and fitting, because as I've already mentioned, the CPU cooler does need to go in last. This will fit without a problem. In goes our 3080 Supreme. That's a good click, I'm satisfied with that. But now, as you can see, there is not much of a gap here at all. So is the radiator gonna fit? If it wasn't copyrighted, I'd put the Jaws theme on right now. So just imagine that in your head. Is this going to fit? Please tell me that it will. Oh, just about, I think we've done it. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Very noisy. And as you can see, it is going to be a tight fit, but at least it's going to be, well, pretty dense. That's good, right? Dense. Let's plug all of our power cables in now. So it really is just the CPU cooler that we're doing at the end. It takes three of them. This is a very beefy GPU. That's a great word, isn't it? Beefy. Beefy graphics card. 
You've got to give me credit for the theming of this PC though. Do you like how I've paired pretty much like a black base with a few white accents and then both the RAM and that Supreme GPU almost have like a metallic grey feel to it? It's pretty heavy, but it's a great looking build. We grab our RGB fans and make sure that it is blowing this way, not the usual into the case. A good thing at least about these QL fans is that they will look right. In this orientation, most fans pretty much have the lighting on one side, but here both sides work, so it's entirely up to you. In the end, I guess it's turned out to some pretty simple advice. Either get a 360 and put this at the front, or get a 240 and put it up top. Because even this isn't going to look optimal because you've got those two big fans and then a little gap down the bottom. It is very nitpicky, but clearly if you're going to go this approach, just do the 360. Ta-da! Our ridiculously heavy, very dense, no compromise gaming PC. This has got everything you could ever ask for it inside and there is literally not a, uh, a centimetre of clearance to spare. There is nothing else we could put in this really that would uh, actually fit inside now. Like genuinely, T tell me what else you could fit in other than a few SSDs. You could not write this script. It has been the most ridiculous last hour of my life. I've been looking all over this studio for the cable to actually get this thing to work. And believe it or not, I can't find it. It is not in the box. And in the end, the only solution to my problem was to take the whole cooler out and actually put a different one in. This is still from NZXT. This is quite similar, but it doesn't have that really bright screen. This is, what is it, the X63 rather than the Z63. I am honestly absolutely devastated. And I spent so long looking for this cable as well. I could have actually just redone it in about 10 minutes or so, but I spent an hour looking for this cable and just can't find it. Ah! I don't think I've been this nervous with a PC build in a long time, but here's hoping everything goes according to plan. Forgotten where the power button is. Here we go. Oh, that sounds terrible. Whoa, 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 whoa. Everything according to plan. Let's try for round two. was a little bit of a delay there that was quite worrying oh my god again for goodness sake thankfully it does actually look like it's just a cable behind the fan rather than the fan touching the radiator itself so all is not lost one final time please can we get this pc working can we get a display was this all the epic ultimate pc build 2021 or is this just another pc centric failure Oh, come on. Yes! Oh, that one is sweet. That one is sweet. So many problems with this rig. But I think, I finally think we've cracked it. I believe the system is working. And look at it. It is an absolutely beautiful thing. This case always had so much potential, but putting all of the RGB together really does work. The fans, the RAM, and then that supreme GPU that is arguably a little bit too big actually really works. We've almost got like this box effect. And the fans on the front as well just look fantastic. I know that's a little bit of a pun actually. It does look fantastic. But come on, imagine the front panel on. You've already seen the B-roll footage. This is a good looking PC. Ladies and gentlemen, the computer is up and running and you know what? It's working a real treat. This is Just Cause 4 running at absolute max settings, 4K resolution. And as you can see, we're absolutely smashing it when it comes to FPS. This is one of those games that you might already have in your library and then you'll be upgrading your PC just to see the difference. And you're gonna be so impressed with what's on offer. The CPU is clearly able to keep up as well. The utilization is around about 27%, but this was a game that was notorious for getting a little bit of stutter from time to time. And a lot of that was caused by CPU issues. So it's nice to see that it's just not an issue here. This is it, Apex Legends dropping out of the ship, 114 frames a second, absolute max settings, 4K resolution. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I wouldn't necessarily choose to play most games at 4K when they're competitive because you want the highest frame rate possible, but when you're getting around about 130 frames a second without turning anything down, you've clearly not got much to complain about. 
If you're more of a 1440p gamer though, just look at those numbers. 250 frames a second at 1440p in Apex Legends, rising to 280. That is absolutely incredible. So clearly, if you do want to pair this with a super high-end 1440p monitor, maybe like the Omen X27 or the new Aorus, then this is going to be a brilliant choice. Next up, Call of Duty Warzone. Let's go for our jump, and right off the bat, again, 4K max settings, getting close to that 100 FPS mark with around about, what's that, 100, 103 FPS. This is Warzone, so obviously it is gonna change from area to area, something as big and open as this, you're probably gonna get a lower frame rate than somewhere that's a lot more confined. Unfortunately, I've died, so this is a great opportunity to turn it down to Quad HD. Oh, fists only. Yes, he's done it! Which means that we can return to the battlefield with around about 150 FPS. So if you can do the maths, that is of course a 50% increase to the frame rate, which is pretty much more where I would try to play. If you're playing on an ultra wide, you'd get slightly less than this, but you'll be able to tune it if you do want to lower down some of the settings further. Clearly a great experience. Are you ready for the heaviest game in our test? Cyberpunk 2077. And here we have yet another surprise. This is absolute max setting. So ray tracing on ultra, DLSS enabled, 4K resolution, and my driving skills might not be great, but around about 50 FPS. Now that might not sound that impressive if you're new to Cyberpunk, but this game is so difficult to drive. This is dead impressive. I've not really had many systems before that could actually get a frame rate like this at this resolution, so I am dead impressed. Tuning down to the resolution that most people will probably be playing this at, which is 1440p, I've also set the DLSS to quality rather than automatic just to make it look as good as possible, and here we're getting pretty much that magical 60fps. In the city like we are now where it's really intense, it will dip below this, but equally when you go out of the city or maybe you're in some firefights down alleys and things, you can expect a little bit higher than this. So I think this is a great balance in the way that I would actually choose to play. In fact, I personally played this game at 1440p, albeit at ultra wide, but I did have DLSS set to balance. So this is actually slightly higher fidelity than I was playing at, but the whole experience from start to finish, while it wasn't exactly the most perfect game in the world, I really enjoyed it and it is highly recommended. However, there is a problem with this PC that you probably did see coming, and that is just thermals, acoustics, and just general optimization. If you are gonna go for this case, then I'd recommend either having a 240 radiator up top, and then fans on the front feeding into that graphics card, or if you're dead set on having the best CPU temperatures possible, get a 360 for the front, but then do have a smaller graphics card so that the air can essentially circulate better. The noise levels of this, they can be tuned a little bit more, but they're not optimal. But I think we've learned a lot in this video. Performance of this thing absolutely can't be faulted. I'm gonna be really interested to test the new Intel CPUs a lot more to make sure that you do get subscribed so we do some head-to-heads. Let me know your thoughts down below though. What do you think of this case, the whole build? Do you think the performance of this is next level? Or would you rather save yourself some money and get something like a 3060 Ti? If you do want to learn a little bit more about anything in this PC, including current pricing, then as always, you can check out my Amazon affiliate links listed down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out Surfshark VPN. I've personally used Surfshark on my travels all over the globe, and I honestly love it. It's a treat for accessing your home territory's content while away, as well as for unlocking global content that's not available in your region, like popular streaming sites. You'll get access to over 3,200 servers across 65 countries, with super fast speeds, all equipped with kill switch functionality, so if your Wi-Fi glitches, your VPN disconnects automatically. Sign up for Surfshark VPN today using code PCCentric for 83% off and three extra months for free. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed it. It honestly helps out so much you wouldn't believe. Get subscribed and I'll see you in the next one.